so actually <clears throat> today even though it is going to be about srimad bhagavatam fifth chapter of the first canto there is in between there is a chapter chapter number 4 but we will read only just uh, just very little very little because the chapter is discussing about the maturity of sri gus sutev goswami who actually used to walk without any dress so he was such an elevated soul that he saw everyone same a soul has no difference man or woman oh, they are all only karmic results so we will skip this chapter and then go to the next however as one of the devotees asked a question from the last last uh, class krishna is the source of all incarnations this is about just a very very particular one which is what is the question we saw that the 17th avatar was veda vyasa 17th avatar was veda vyasa tadak saptadase jatah satyavatyam paras sarat chakre वेद तरो साक दृष्टि गुमसो अल्प मेद सो देर इज स्पेशल दिस इज सेवेंटीन इनकारनेशन सप्त दस मीन सेवेंटीन सो हि वॉज ओन हू डिडेड बट द थिंग इज वी वाच केयरफुली वेद बी एस वी नो दैट ही इज रियली वी नो फ्रॉम द्वापर युग बट देन द एटीन इज कमिंग एज राम अवतर बिके नर देवदम आपन्ना सुरकार्य समुद्र निग्रह सो दिस पर्टिकुलाशन इज लॉर्ड राम बट वेन डी लॉर्ड राम एक्चुअली अपियर थ्री तुग सो दट वॉज एक्चुअली द प्रीवियस युग सो बिकॉज द्वापर युग कम्स आफ्टर थ्री तुग सो दिस मीन समथिंग सम कॉन्ट्रडिक्शन सो हाउ कुड वेद व्यास अपियर बिफोर लॉर्ड राम we know that vedavyasha in swapar yuga and lord rama appeared in the previous treta yuga very good question but remember okay very careful this are all we are talking about about spiritual dimensions here so remember that the appearances appearance originates in the spiritual world and it may take some time to appear in the material world so the so the origination has started but it hasn't really come to the effect so the sequence of yuga sometimes also changes okay then the third one is sometimes there are overlapping of yugas so if you see that these all the yugas and all these things going on they are all controlled by the supreme lord's energy so thinking okay now this is the interesting thing okay thinking that a doubt will come in mind Sudeva Sudeva Goswami has actually given the answer here. It is it is about the yuga sometimes get shifted, and also overlap with the previous yuga in the or 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 the next yuga. So he is saying, Sute Sute Uvacha, Dwapare, Dwapare Saman Saman Upradapte, Tritiye Yuga. पर्यते पर्यये जात परासराद योगी वासवियम यम खलास खरे सो व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ही सेज द सेकंड मिलेनियम ओवरलैप द थर्ड सो ही सेज व्हेन द सेकंड मिलेनियम ओवरलैप द थर्ड व्हाट इज द सेकंड मिलेनियम हियर सेकंड बिकॉज बिकॉज फर्स्ट इज सतयुग सेकंड मिलेनियम इज त्रितयुग so that overlaps the third it is actually overlapping on the third third is uh, third is what dwapar yuga that is the time the great sage was born to parasara in the womb of satyavadi the daughter of basu so here we have to be ca- very careful understanding there was a millennium overlap second yuga is treta yuga and the third is dwapar yuga it is due to this overlap we do not understand the sequence i'm showing here a book also already discussing about various yuga shift so this are all because so many things are happening that we don't have any knowledge of you know we don't have any control <laughs> we are, you know like it's all basically happening beyond our our imagination even so also we hear from puranas that 
when ved vyasa descended he did not take a body immediately it's also there okay this is in a in a purana so the reason was that he was waiting for the correct and auspicious time remember parasara was also finally when he was actually going on the boat that he really was commanded yes this is that of auspicious time so you have to really bring ved vyasa right now and what will you do and that was when he he really made uh, these uh, these uh, uh, this matsya gandhi uh, boat woman and parasuri mohan when was just saw her only he saw her and from his power brought ved vyasa from his womb and he immediately appeared as a as a like four years boy or something right there so that was how the whole manifestation happened so it's really very very mysterious of course so very good question but remember always we have to understand that we cannot understand the spiritual dimension so we have to go by the shastras as what they are actually talking about and hear from guru so this is a this is very important so so now we'll proceed we'll proceed to the next chapter shrimad bhagavatam one uh, first canto okay let Okay, let me just uh, mute everybody. Okay, all right. So this is the fifth canto of first. Uh, f- sorry, fifth chapter of first canto. Narada Muni is actually instructing, actually chastising Veda Vyasa. So it is actually a significant ch- chastisement in the history. In fact, if the chastisement was not done, we would not have received Sri Madhu Bhagavata. So after dividing the Vedas into four, Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sama Veda, and Adharvana Veda, and writing Mahabharata and eighteen you know main Puranas and eighteen Upa Puranas, Veda Vyasa was not satisfied. Actually, of the eighteen Puranas, Vishnu Purana was not him. He was only narrating from what he heard from Parasara. So so it is it was already mutilated anyway. So this also one of the Sathvi Purana, but not Sutta Sathvi. So in fact he was getting to the point where he felt so miserable that Veda Vyasa was not satisfied so Veda Vyasa after all these things were done so wonderfully done he was not at all satisfied in fact he was getting into a point where he was about to kill himself so miserable so depressed so this is what also will happen when someone reads many scriptures without the guidance of guru This is exactly what will happen. He will completely go, go, go crazy, and then it will be a case for the, for the the you know, mental hospital. So depression came even to Vyasa Vyasa, the most intelligent and is an avatar of the Lord. Actually, all these are the leelas of the Lord, so that we we get the Bhagavatam. That is the other side of it. So Vyasa Vyasa did not know what caused his depression. as a last resort he meditated on his guru deva narada muni for help so this is what finally end up in huh? so if you have a guru then of course we can go to guru if you do not have a guru i will go i will ask this and that and try to to take care of that you know this, this is what it is depression medicine medication is there all those things are there but the root cause only guru dev will know in krishna consciousness without surrendering to a guru there is no way of attaining krishna or no way of getting krishna bhakti of course when one genuinely surrenders to a guru the disciples actually gives everything body mind speech and his own atma there is actually book called guru devadatma so that that we are we are publishing that in on, on the guru purnima 21st of july in kanyagumari too so one the disciple gives everything in the in the in the agni that's what he is saying that mantra is saying that is i am giving everything to my guru so this is called sri guru pada ashraya pada ashraya guru pada ashraya in front of his guru he should be very humble because sharanagati starts with hum, with, with humility otherwise there is no sharanagati there are six amsa of sharanagati and the first one is actually humble so shrila prabhupada in the class also told about this very nicely 
So he said, okay, I'm, I'm just reading as he is, as, as the text is. A disciple is always a fool before his spiritual master. Just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Guru more murka deki karila sasana. So what exactly that means? So my spiritual, <laughs> this was told by Mahaprabhu. My spiritual master saw me a fool number one. Therefore, he has chastised me. Remember, the, you know, because if you see the whole, whole history there, uh, because that was why he was such a telling, you know, in, in front of so many sannyasis also. Yeah, this is what he said. I am not fit for anything. I am not fit for reading anything. I am not good for anything at all. Who is why? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saying. <laughs> right? So a disciple should be always ready to be chastised. So a disciple should be humble and should not think that he has become perfect. As soon as he thinks that he has become perfect, he becomes, I am now reading the text from Srila Prabhupada. As soon as he thinks that he has become perfect, he becomes nonsense number one. So he will use these words left and right. So always to be chastised by the spiritual master for perfection. And he was also asking, was Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu fool number one? He is God himself. But what is? But that is the position. He should remain always a fool number one, ready to be chastised. So a guru should never be flat. Never be saying, yeah, hey, you are good. You are whatever you are doing. Good, good, good. Like that. No. So actually, even once he is singing nice bhajan, we, you know, a guru is not supposed to say, hey, this, you did very good or something. Actually, you should not. But small children we used to do because of just younger age men. But we should not even say that. Because he will feel ego will grow and grow. Huh? So, so he should remain always a fool number one ready to be chastised. So a guru should never be flat. It is his duty to chastise for the benefit of the disciple. If the disciple is feeling bad when, when, when the guru chastises, he is not fit to be a disciple. Because ego is so high overflowing and of course this is all from his class. So we see many things from the history also. For example, as soon as Arjuna accepted Krishna as his guru, what did Krishna say? Krishna immediately chastised him only. He essentially told Arjuna that Krishna was fool number one. For what? For lamenting for those Things for which one should not lament. This is Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, 11th text is Asochyanan Vaisochatvam Pranyavadam Chabhashese Gata Suna Gata Sumcha Nanuso Chandi Pandita. You are a fool. You are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor the dead. See, <laughs> remember, right? See, this is how. So until then he was a sucker, he was a friend only. And as soon as he surrenders to Krishna as accepting him as a guru, immediately Krishna takes. Yes, that is his duty to chastise. Also, many think that at the end Arjuna fought the fought the war. Because he realized that he should do karma yoga. This is nonsense. There is no karma yoga there. It is not the truth. The truth is, Arjuna just did Guru Seva. <laughs> because Guru ordered, yes, you should fight. So he was obeying the order of his Guru. Even though he was giving a choice, but yes, he obeyed the order. Chota Haridas Thakur was chastised even to the point so that he had to leave his body by, you know, just jumping in, in, in the gang, Ganges. Of course, he actually obtained a divine position. That is Chaitanya Charitamrita. We are not going to go through the detail. Lord Advaita Acharya was, was actually elder than Ch Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he was not at all chastised by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because he was giving respect. So he was upset and worried. I am not getting you know, chastisement. So big hankering for chastisement from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He even devised a plan. 
and finally of course that chaitanya chaitanya charitamrita then finally lord chaitanya mahaprabhu who chastised him with you know with so much of anger for what he did and then he chal then atvaita chaitanya was jumping in joy yes today i got chastisement from lord chaitanya my my lord i am now happy and then he was so happy. so if a guru does not chastise his disciple he is not a guru at all that disciple is going to no going will not really you know be all right at all so when veda vyasa meditated on his guru narada muni came to know so he came down to the place where veda vyasa was living so veda vyasa received his guru with almost you know i mean the complete 100% of course he has surrendered anyway so so he he was really having the humility in in him and with so much of respect he offered a seat to his gurudev and to really sit on what did his gurudev narada muni you know instruct to veda vyasa this is the fifth chapter this is one of you know this one is about the chastisement only so now how how we really do is now i am also i am not so okay because we have technology is there you know we can do all go those things so i am not going to put the thing on the slide anymore i just you know pull the things on on this here and you will see the shloka right there suhuta uvacha adattam sukam vasina upasinam brihachravat devarishi pra praha vip viparshim veena panihi smayan iva so suta goswami was narrating so where he was narrating in naimisharanya so he was saying thus the sage amongst the gods narada muni is a say is a what devarishi you have brahma rishi you have devarishi so like that there are different different raja rishi you know the sanaka sanaka maharaj raja rishi like that you have different different kinds of rishi and narada muni is the rishi of, of god that means he is a devarishi so he gave he gave a seat to and comfortably and narada muni was seated and narada muni was smiling apparently smiling and he addressed the rishi who is the rishi veda vyasa rishi of brahmana brahma rishi is veda vyasa okay so brahma rishi is veda vyasa so he was just by just smiling he addressed and then and carefully eh, and carefully here is very first question very first question what is the f- first question coming there narada uvacha ಪಾರಸರಿಯ ಮಹಾಭಾಗೋ ಮಹಾಭಾಗಿತ್ ಆತ್ಮನ ಪರಿತುಷ್ಯತಿ ಶಾರೀರ ಆತ್ಮ ಮಾನಸ ಹೀಸ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಪುಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ರೂಟ್ ಹಿ ಹಿ ನೋಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಸೊ ಅಡ್ರೆಸಿಂಗ್ ವೇದ ವ್ಯಾಸ ದ ಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ಪಾರಸಾರ ನಾರದ ಮುನಿ ಇನ್ಕ್ವೈರ್ಡ್ okay the look watch the question this is how he is going to end also are you satisfied by identifying with the body or the mind as objects of self realization is very deep by the way i don't know how many of you could really follow that deep deep this is the root cause of the whole problem so one can never be satisfied by identifying with his body and trying to satisfy the body so what is the problem with the veda vyasa this is what the problem with the, with the veda vyasa why because look at all the compositions of vedas and upanishads puranas all are about karma kanda and politics mahabharata is full of politics actually krishna devotee has nothing to do watch in mahabharata it's all politics only and enjoyment oh oh we yeah, are look at here he did this that's why now look at here these are all revenge and things like that no mahabharata is not for krishna mahina krishna bhakta even though dwaraka krishna is coming there to really teach this bhagavad gita bhagavad gita is not the bhakti shastra in the, in the, in the real level 
is only giving all the philosophical we actually they are all extracta upanishad only that's why it's called gita upanishad so it's a foundation so that was his mistake but watch look at you srimad bhagavatam is revealing so many things now all the hindus are thinking then you read this prana that prana this this veda this everything and here finally he is saying this is nonsense you will come to know so now he is saying that okay this is the thing so the mistake what is the mistake that veda vyasa did that is a mistake so but veda vyasa did not realize the mistake why it was by the will of the lord so that all the karmic people should have something to uh, to read and see and uh, read and advance so vedas are not that is why he says i am what beyond veda vedesu durlabham i am beyond vedas hmm. krishna says that even in the in the vedas we will not see anything about krishna except one line coming what is saha why you know he says uh, yeah he says the um, saha why saha so you know okay yeah no no it's not sada so he is the prema personified that is how the veda says hmm. so that's it that thought comes there this is also in yajur veda that's it just one line there is nothing of nothing more than that and you know you worship chandra you worship indra you worship this one that god that god you will get this that's what the vedas are right? are all about is about that ha huh. raso vai saha hmm. raso he is a rasa personality so that is how he is saying so he is a rasa raja of course you know krishna krishna is rasa raja so anyway so unless only chastised for his mistake how can he correct it no it's no way of there this is one of the main duty of a guru because everyone has a ego mountain tied with, with to, to them there is a big thing that they are because they are only only 5 feet tall or, or 6 feet tall but the what the ego is like 10000 feet tall so that's what they are dragging with so when you see that we see that along with the, with the person also that the ego is also going hmm. so why should narada muni bring the question of satisfying the body and mind as object of self realization that is how he is pointing the deficiency here you made a mistake you have not described so elaborately about the supreme personality of god red you have instead touched only the social religious political point of views this is prabhupada this words so narada muni carefully you know that you know is he is carefully putting those the, those words so that slowly this the truth will come out so he knew clearly that why veda vyasa was depressed that is why he said this this uh, next verse this verse anyway i am not going to, going to read the verse because we 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 may not have time because this is a long chapter so he he said your inquiries were full and your studies were all very well fulfilled and there is no doubt that you have prepared a great and wonderful work the mahabharat which is full of all kinds of vedic sequences elaborately explained you have even nicely delineated the subject of impersonal brahman uh, because that is the because this sayuja mukti is is the horrible thing brahman 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 mayavadi is all all running shankaracharya like not only that all the all they are all going there hindus are running there you actually delineate that's the very nice as well as the knowledge job derived there from why should you be despondent in spite of all these thinking that you are under that you are not feeling satisfied and you feel dejected why and now vyasadev is saying all you have said about me is perfectly correct despite all these i am not specified i feel dejected i therefore question you about the root cause of my dissatisfaction oh gurudev please help me you are a man of unlimited knowledge due to your being the offspring of brahma you came from brahma and you can travel anywhere in the three worlds 
and like the air you can penetrate the internal re- you know re- region of everyone as said you are as good as the all pervasive super soul please therefore find out the deficiency in me ah, this is surrendering see vedavyasa who is vedavyasa he is actually amsa lord narayana even though everybody is coming from lord krishna so directly amsa lord narayana so now we see the surrender to his guru and now only the guru will come and help in fact narada muni already peers through the mind of vedavyasa and he knew he knew what was the reason for the depression in vedavyasa the root is very simple all huh, his composition was not about bhagavan krishna or about his past times swayam so bhagavan krishna we are talking about because mahabharata war he is coming there to to as a, as you know whatever he he wanted to do there but the war happened because of him only so unless one glorifies the names and forms and qualities and leelas of bhagavan sri krishna one can never be satisfied this is a summum bonum of all knowledge and all the realizations these discussions are just to bring up what mistake vedavyasa had done and what should be actually done that will make our soul satisfied hmm. what is the eight okay i'm skipping to eight now so now narada muni is saying you have not actually broadcast the sublime and spotless glories and pastimes of the personality of godhead any philosophy as you had done which does not satisfy the transcendental senses of the supreme lord sri krishna is considered useless no use and any worthless see that is worthless he is saying it's considered worthless and any worthless thing we do will bring only worthless things which is depression you have written so many puranas vedas upanishads mahabharat so many things did you write about lord krishna about his leelas in gokul with his friends did you write no did you write about how wonderfully he was herding the cows and calves in the forests of vrindavan did you write no did you write how wonderfully he attracted everyone and how they were all showering love for him did you write no did you write about the sweetness of his flute that even makes lord shiva lord brahma and even adi sheshas to go mad and he especially made all the gopis to become so mad did you write this no he was crying already did you write about how he was stealing butter from the houses of the gopis and how every day they were complaining about it as with so much of happiness to mother yashoda that indirectly they were coming and complaining see krishna your son came to all our houses and he was stealing butter why because he likes our butter not yours yashoda you are not you are not like you like us did you write all these things no did you write how the whole gokul was brought down from his spiritual abode and so many leelas were enacted to attract the jivas why he came did you write no did you write about how mother yashoda was teaching krishna how to walk how to walk and how she loved him so much many more than times more than his own soul did you write about this naughty krishna who was enchanted who enchanted everyone did you write no did you write about how krishna was bound by mother yashoda and was weeping in front of her did you write 
Did you write about the wonderful Rasalila that he performed even great great gods are hungering to get a glimpse of it even for a moment even Lakshmi Devi is not able to see anything and she is meditating outside Vrindavan in the Belvana for mil- so many so many years and with no result yet Did you write all these things Now how can you be happy without narrating krishna's past times what good is it to you what good did you write then just some try philosophical eh? philosophies and karmic stories mahabharata is full of karmic deeds fighting politics and worldly matters and that's why people really go there and watch there was this what that is happening even they are actually putting there there on the tv is like radha krishna leela are what qualification what qualification they have to really put this on on this like like a cinema and people are going and the thing yes i am a radha krishna bhakta this is nonsense so mahabharata full of only karmic deeds it's a karma except for a little glance of krishna that is dwaraka krishna ha huh? what real use is there to satisfy the soul nothing and nothing then how can you feel happiness so the reason for the depression that is found in you is this is what the mistake that you did now you have to nullify so that is why he said i am putting the same okay that is a sloka is coming yes you have to describe the glories of the lord hmm that comes to the 10 those words you know that which do not describe the glory glories of the lord this mahabharata all these kind of thing vedas and all those things are what are they like that it are it is all like the we call pilgrimage it is a pilgrimage for the crows what do the crows do what kind of pilgrimage place they go to eat all this nonsense hmm? but what is swan will do this is a very very nice sloka but the thing is we we want to having to really go through all those on the other hand those bhaktas who are like swans gather only in the clean lakes with fresh flowers and only they can get the real pleasure and crows think that they are getting a real pleasure but now we know what is the what is the pleasure what kind of pleasure we are talking about one is totally rubbish and other is glorious on the other hand that literature which is full of descriptions of the transcendental glories of the name fame forms and pastimes of and this supreme kvilar sri krishna is a different creation is a different shastra is all full of transcendental words directed towards bringing about a revolution in the impious lives of these worlds misdirected civilization such transcendental literatures even if they are imperfectly composed or heard sung and accepted by purified men who are thoroughly honest so the what he is saying is yes these are even if they have little defect or something here and there that's not a problem because again gita also he says lord krishna says right so those kind of sadhus are on the right path even if they really make little mistakes no problem because they are on the right track oh veda vyasa your vision is perfect but your fame is spotless but but he is dragging but you should think of the past times of the lord in trance and bring out all those to the to the people hmm? that is what is going to give them relief from material bondage we are in all the people here are material bondage so now you realize the first question how you are asking are you really satisfied with this with all these things related to satisfy your mind huh? satisfy your, your 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 body huh? so especially the mind 
and you are you are indulgent also oh yeah yeah that makes sense this makes sense you know what kind of thing but there is no rasa of talking about krishna or singing about krishna or hearing about krishna and that is exactly so you have encouraged people to enjoy themselves using your scripture are what a heavy statement this is look at here oh veda vyasa the people in general are naturally inclined to enjoy bodily body and mind you see remember very first thing very first word very first shloka uh, that was really uh, you know put by <laughs> by narada muni was this is exactly what it is you pointing you have actually encouraged them in that way in the name of religion this is very verily condemned and is quite un this is no use hence you should propagate the real welfare that is to render bhakti devotional service to bhagavan sri krishna even a bhakta who follows even even a bhakta who really hears this and even if he really may be falling down but there is no danger because he is has a favor of favor from the lord from his next birth and so on he will pick up and he can progress hmm? so even though this this sense enjoyment that you are actually propagating can be obtained easily and automatically bhakti cannot be huh? bhakti is not easily obtained even in brahma loka souls are wandering from patala to brahma loka but they are all should seek to develop the devotion to the lord so this is the thing now and and now i am just you know skipping to okay all the way to 19 okay this discussion that i was talking about is all going on with the deep intense and now go, go, go here my dear vyasadeva even though a devotee of lord krishna sometimes falls down somehow or other he certainly does not undergo material existence like others karmis jnanis they are in jeopardy the karma is jnani is karma yoga jnana yoga they are in jeopardy because a person who has want to relish the taste of the lotus feet of king lord lord krishna he can he does not want to do anything other than because once he got the taste become he becomes actually drunkard we cannot change them because once he you know he has seen the higher taste he will reject all this unwanted like the crow you know the crow was eating what some dead bodies and all the nonsense that we really throw on the on the street that's what it is relishing that is that state that is taste of that crows but my devotees are so and they were always associated with the pure devotees singing my names and always talking about my leelas Huh? with the other devotees and engage in themselves in so is so many bliss once they have tasted that they never want anything else hmm. you have the perfect vision though you you yourself can know the super so super soul who is the who is actually the personality of god god because you are present as the plenary portion of the lord who are you you are an amsa of the lord himself see you are present as the plenary portion of the lord he is literally saying narada muni is saying of course narada muni is also a plenary portion of lord krishna and although you, you are birthless you have appeared on this earth for the well being of all people therefore describe the transcendental past times of the supreme personality of godhead shri krishna more vividly oh muni hmm. i am in my you know my past life was blessed to hear from sadhus hmm. so in the last millennium i was born as the son of a certain maid servant engaged in the service of brahmanas who were following the principles of vedanta when they were living together during the four months the chaturmasya four months of the rainy season i was engaged in their personal service that was arrangement of the lord only hmm. 
So this sloka, this okay, that's the next okay. Now the twenty-four. I am going to the twenty-four. In the twenty-four, he saying, "Te mai apne ta kile chapale yar pake dande adrut krida na ke krida na ke means." Ah, uh, so okay. Watch out that many people here in this country they are all crazy about sports. These are these adrut krida means sports, sports actually. Watch here now. Although they were impartial by nature, those follow those followers of the Vedanta blessed me with their causeless mercy. As far as I was concerned, I was who Narada Muni in his previous birth. I was self-controlled and had no attachment for sports. What do we do? Here, sports is everything. Hmm. Either you really get into you know get into sports and you know play this thing this thing this is actually demonic in fact. So a yeah, demonic will be having automatically interest in sports activities because it is all bodily related. So the bodily related because I did not have any any interest in doing exercise even nothing. I was only always thinking we are thinking about that is why God consciousness not they are not going to be interested in all these things. Sports and everything. No, so even though I was a boy, the boy or normally he was will be interested in playing. I was not interested at all. In addition, I did not speak more than required. Only once a day, that even by their permission only I took the remnants of some prasadam from them. And by so doing, all my sins were at once eradicated. See, the remnant from a sadhu, a Krishna devotee, is is a incomparably superior in bringing spiritual realization. And also, you have to control our your senses, not like eating five times, seven times a day. Hmm. So by doing that, they taking the remnants. Of of the prasadam that you know that that they were you know they they offered to the Lord and then they consumed and the remnants I was taking by doing so my all my sins were all at once eradicated. Thus being engaged, I became purified in heart. And at that time, the very nature of the transcendental became, you know, the the, the, the transcendentalist became attracted to me. Because see, they recall arrangement that the Lord only. So, oh Veda Vyasa, hmm, now we are on twenty-six. Oh Veda Vyasa, in that association, and by the mercy of those great sages, I could hear them describe the attractive activities of Lord Krishna, and thus listening attentively, my taste for hearing of the. Of of the Lord increased at every step. So a so a sage and pure devotees are the only one who can actually make you greedy. Anyway, those who could who are fortunate to attend the Friday classes, you know, for only for the initiated and not only the senior devotees that we are doing. What was the thing that we covered? Everything raga nuga we need is what greed. Who can give the greed? Only who has, who has realized that taste by his greed, a greed can be thus given only by a pure devotee. Hmm. So he was greedy. He was getting greedy and greedy, and thus I was listening to all the Hari Kathas very attentively. Because even if I do not, I did not want to 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 miss any of the Hari Kathas, whatever the thing that they were talking about. But what do we do here? I go in vacation. I go here, there. You know, I have some guests coming or this coming. Go, okay, cut the class. Very because I have better thing to do there. So this is not great. How will we get? You know, how will we get Krishna? Just, just imagine. So he was saying, my taste for hearing about Lord Krishna's pastime were increasing step by step and step. This is called katha ruchi. So you have sastra ruchi. Then katha ruchi, and then finally nama ruchi comes, and you will not want to leave even little time, even a fraction of time, not chanting his holy name. 
Anyway, that was that was a blog that I haven't sent that to anyone because it's very deep. I don't want to really send two deep things to everybody. So, oh great sage, as soon as I got a taste that ruchi of the personality of you know of of Krishna, my attention to hear of the Lord was unflinching, and as my taste developed, I could realize. that it was only in my ignorance that i had accepted this cross and subtle covering look at here see now again go back to what the question that narada muni asked whether we as are you you know feeling satisfied or you know do you think that you can get the realization just by satisfying your body and mind that's how it started and now this is another thing actually adding there so he saying narada muni was going on So this during this two season, the rainy season and autumn, I had the opportunity to hear those these great souls, sages, constantly chanting the unadulterated glories of the Lord Hari. As the flow of my devotion service began, the coverings of the modes of passion and ignorance vanished. So became sadhuik. I was very much attached to those sages. Now attachment comes to look at here. So instead of worldly attachments and bodily attachment, now the attachment is going to what? To Vaishnavas, to towards so that we our attachment is through them to Krishna. I was very much attached to those sages. I was very gentle in behavior, and all my sins were eradicated in their service. Service Guru Seva. Only by Guru Seva you can get anything because no Guru Seva, nothing. See you. Yeah, just nothing. Just like thinking that okay, I can do this. No, Guru Seva is very very important. Otherwise, we are not going to progress. So he was saying, I was gentle, and in my heart, I got strong faith in them, those Vaishnavas, those Bhaktas. I got subjugated the senses, and I was strictly following them. Remember, with my body and mind now again the same question that that he was uh, narada muni was asking now he is putting that word here i was strictly following them so towards bhakti so towards the lord that i was giving fall i am my body and mind everything was following them not trying to satisfy them in the body and mind so here again this is the i am really putting the back thing again so okay here we collect the first question narada muni asked okay this is the thing narada uvacha para sariya mahabaga bavata kachit atmana parityushyati sharira atma manasai bava are you satisfied by identifying with the body or mind as objects of self realization that is all about this vedas upanishad puranas the that everything as kuppai kuppai means useless that is why chaitanya mahaprabhu said throw about everything vishnu purana to write out that purana linga purana shiva purana that purana everything just throw it out kuppai or nonsense what do you have to to see only bhagavatam only bhagavatam that is why he said put the question and then now the root is coming out so what is the answer to derive the root of the, de- the depression we should nourish only the soul not our body or mind vedas mahabharata puranas all these have goal of living comfortably in this life and attaining heavenly lokas that's it and that is why the body and mind you see he how he clearly put a needle right there eh? to take out the torn the, 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 the torn out so veda vyasa has composed all those not for the real bliss of the atma the soul only devotion to krishna can bring the supreme bliss for the atma and now i am skipping all the way to 35 because this is a big chapter though 35 that is why i did not even uh, you know sing any bhajan also today yeah. so now all the way to 
How many more slides you have? Five more slides. Okay, we'll do. Yetatr kriyate karma Bhagavad paritoshanam Jnanam yetat adhinam hi Bhakti yoga samanvitam So whatever work is done here in this life for the satisfaction of the mission of the Lord is called Bhakti Yoga or transcendental loving service to the Lord. Bhakti means actually service. There is a service involved there. And what is called knowledge becomes a concomitant factor. So here knowledge, Sastra knowledge is also necessary. But not those kind of Sastras. We have to have that greedy to read the Bhakti Sastras. Like our Gurudev's books. You get all of the Gurudev's books and read and read. That's what we are doing. Right? So while performing duties according to the order of Sri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one constantly remembers Him, His names and His qualities. 24 hours a day that should be going on. So let us chant the glories of Sri Krishna along with His plenary portions like Pratimana, Anirutta, Sankarsha, who are there? There are three Vishnus. <laughs> there are three Vishnus. This is Ruchi. And actually, if you if you if you really chant the holy chant the Panchatattva Mandra, everything is there. <laughs> they are all coming there automatically. So now the conclusion is coming in all the way to 40. So here, this is the conclusion. Okay, very important. Now look. Tuamapi Adabraj. Shruta Vishrutam Vibo Samapyate Yena Vidam Vibushti Sitam Prakya Hidukair Muhur Artitat Manam Sanklesha Nirvanam Ushandinanyata Please, O oh, Veda Vyasa. Therefore, describe the Almighty Lord Sard Sri Krishna's activities which you have learned by your vast knowledge of the Vedas. Yes, you, you know all the, all the things. For that, only your hangering should be for this. So that will satisfy the hangerings of great learned men. And at the same time, mitigate the miseries of the masses of common people who are always suffering from material pangs. Indeed, there is no other way to get out of such miseries unless they come and relish the Leelas of Bhagavan Sri Krishna. <laughs>
पदे रखी राम मधुरम मधुराधि पदे रखी राम मधुरम करणम मधुरम करणम मधुरम हरणम मधुरम रमणम मधुरम अमित मधुरम शमित मधुरम मधुराधिपते रखिरम मधुरम मधुराधिपते रखिरम मधुरम धिपते रखिरम मधुरम कोपी मधुरादीरा मधुरा योग मधुरम भूत मधुरम श्रेष्ठ मधुरम श्रेष्ठ मधुरम मधुराधिपते मधुरम मधुराधिपते रखिरम मधुरम मधुरम 